Chapter 11 More and More Surprises There doesn't seem to be anyone here, said Bessie, cautiously looking around. Well, who lighted the candle? asked Moonface, his big round face looking anxious. We didn't leave it lighted. Suddenly, the father bear gave an angry growl and pointed to his chair. Who's been sitting in my chair? he said. And who's been sitting in my chair? said Mother Bear, pointing to hers. And who's been sitting in my little chair and broken into bits? squeaked the baby bear in tears. Bessie giggled. This sounds a lot like the story of the three bears coming true, said Fanny. They're all talking about porridge next. They did. Who's been eating my porridge, said Father Bear angrily. And who's been eating my porridge, said Mother Bear angrily. And who's been eating my porridge and gobbled it all up, went the baby bear, scraping his spoon around the empty plate. It's all very mysterious, said Moonface. Somebody lighted the candle. Somebody sat in the chairs. Somebody ate the porridge. But who? Not me this time, said Goldilocks. I was with you all the time. We were snowballing, wasn't I, bears? You certainly were, growled the father bear, patting the little girl on the back. He was very fond of her. I wish we had found poor Joe, said Bessie. Whatever we'll be doing in this horrid cold land. Do you suppose we ought to go out and look for him again, said Fanny, shivering as she thought of the ice-cold wind outside? No, said Moonface decidedly. No one is going out of this cottage again till we're safely in the wood at home. I'm afraid we can't possibly rescue Joe now. What's that noise, said Gordilock suddenly. Everybody listened. Someone was snoring softly in the next room. We never thought of looking there, said Moonface. Who can it be? Shh, said Goldilocks. If we can catch him asleep, we can tie him up and make him a prisoner easily. But if he wakes up, he might be fierce. They tiptoed to the door of the bedroom. One by one they squeezed through. Who's been lying in my bed, said the father bear in a growly voice. Shh, said Moonface crossly. Who's been lying in my bed, said Mother Bear. Shh, said everyone. And who's been lying in my bed and is fast asleep there still, said the baby bear. Everyone stared at the cot. Yes, there was someone there, someone in a white bear skin. Was it a polar bear? It was a white bear, said Moonface, half frightened. Tie him up before he wakes, said the father bear. He's an enemy now. Goldilocks got a rope out of the kitchen cupboard. Moonface went out one side of the cot and the father bear went to the other. The rope held between them. They nodded to one another. In a trice, both bent down, caught hold of the sleeper and twisted the rope tightly around him. He's caught, cried Moonface joyfully. Joe awoke with a jump. Who had got him? Had the magic snowman caught him again? He began to shout and struggle. Moonface tied him down more tightly. And then Bessie and Fanny saw his face and yelled out loudly, Moonface, it's Joe, it's Joe, oh, it's Joe. They rushed to the cot and flung their arms around Joe. The boy was too astonished to speak. He got out of the rope and hugged his sisters. How did you get here? he asked. How did you get here? cried Bessie and Fanny. Come into the kitchen and we'll all have some hot porridge and milk, said Goldilocks. We can talk then and get warm. So Joe went with the others, all chattering loudly about everything. Goldilocks ladled out porridge into blue bowls and made some cocoa. Soon everyone was putting sugar or treacle on porridge and drinking cocoa. Joe poured some milk over his porridge and smiled joyfully at everybody. What an adventure this has been, he said. Shall I tell my tale first or will you tell yours? He told his, and then Bessie told how Moonface had gone to the three bears for help and all about the fierce battle.
It's a pity about the battle, said the father bear mournfully. The white bears are cousins of ours and have always been friendly. Now they seem to be enemies. Let's hope they don't discover our cottage, said Goldilocks, eating her porridge. Moonface, hadn't we better make some magic and get back to the wood? Plenty of time, plenty of time, said Moonface, pouring himself another hot cocoa. But you know, there wasn't plenty of time. For just at that moment, Goldilocks gave a scream and pointed to the window. Someone looked in, she said. Don't be silly, said Moonface. I'm not, said Goldilocks. I tell you, somebody looked in. Who could it be? The handle of the door was moving, yelled Moonface, and he leapt to the door in a trice he had locked it and bolted it. The father bear got up and went to the window. He looked out into the snowstorm. I can't see anything, he said, and then he growled loudly, Yes, I can. I can see the white bears. They have surrounded our cottage. Now what shall we do? Well, they can't get in at the door, and they certainly shan't get in at the window, said Moonface, looking fierce. The door shook, but it held well. Someone battered on it. We shan't let you in, yelled Joe. If anyone tries to open the window or break it, I'll hit him with this kettle, shouted Moonface, who had caught up to with the kettle and was dancing about with it. Moonface, the kettle has got hot water in it, said Fanny. Do be careful, you drop some on me. I'll pour it down the neck of any bear that dares to come in here, yelled Moonface, spattering around the room with steaming drops. Oh dear, said Bessie, hide behind the bed, Fanny. It seems to me that Moonface is almost as dangerous as the bears. The father bear dragged the big table across the door. Things were getting exciting. Joe and the girls were frightened, but they couldn't help feeling terribly thrilled too. Whatever was going to happen next... Oomph! Oomph! boomed the big bears outside, but they couldn't get in at the door or window. But they found another way. The chimney was wide and big, for the fireplace was one of the old-fashioned kind and needed a wide chimney. One of the bears climbed up to the roof, followed by three more. The first one slipped into the big chimney. Down he went. Whoosh! down another and the third and the fourth they landed with a crash on the big hearth and hurriedly jumped away from the flames of the fire surrender they cried to the startled children and bears surrender the magic snowman is outside let him in <laughs>